Uh, we'll see. Happy uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Or yep. whatever day it is you watch this, wherever you happen to be, everybody. Yep. Welcome to Panel Surfing, issue six. Legacy numbering eight. Legacy eight. Uh, I'm your host, Bobby Digital. Uh, and joining me, as always, is my sidekick and uh, Ward. Burt Ward, even? <laughs> my Burt Ward. Burt Ward to uh, my Adam West. Sure. There it is. Uh, Ashley. Ashley Van O. Good morning. Mad Makes himself. Yes. We got a few things to cover today. Uh, it's going to be an interesting DC centric episode, I feel, this Ooh. time around. Um, you'll have to excuse me. I've got all my notes written on my phone this time because I tried to write them late at night and then fell asleep doing it. So here we go. Uh, we're going to change the format up slightly this week, Ash. We're going to okay. cover who won last week's Awesome Arena first. Oh, yeah, okay. Are we also going to announce uh, who the next one is? Yes. No, we'll save that for the end of the episode. Okay. okay. How, because it's your turn to do it this time, oh. and I'm going to give you time to think about it. Okay, understood. Great. So, jokes on you. I already thought about it. Good. The winner of last week's Awesome Arena mm -hmm. is nobody. Wow. It's a draw. The huh. votes are in. Wow. And it was a dead draw. The most anticlimactic finish you could ask for in a battle to the death is a draw. Or if anything, that ends up being a... Uh, climactic ending, depending on how you want to look at it, right? I'd rather die. Okay. Anyway, uh, very good. So, yeah, between Nightwing and Cyclops, we have a draw. Hmm. Frankly, I was it was a toss-up for me, too, because those two are very evenly matched. The only real advantage I would give is to Cyclops. Because yeah. he has his... Optic Blast, and we don't really know what the upper limit of that power is. Sure. At the same time, though, like I was saying last week, Cyclops is not like a, you know, he doesn't have like a power set that Robin, or sorry, Nightwing has never dealt with before. So, right. Or, well, and or similar. As I kind of mentioned when we were off, off film last week, I mean, I feel like Nightwing just hits Cyclops in the visor, and all of a sudden it's chaos, and yeah. Nightwing just has to control that chaos and then win, so. Yeah, I mean... You know, Could really go either way. It'd be interesting, but uh, either yeah. way, people have spoken. It was a draw. So, now that we've covered who won last week's mm -hmm. Awesome Arena, we can get into our kind of normal flow here. Uh, we're going to talk about the news in the comic book world cool. this week. And, uh, Ash, I've got a few headlines for you. And like I said, it's a very DC-heavy <clears throat> week. I'm sure there were some Marvel headlines, but I thought, you know what? Let's stop, uh, you know... Taking taking the uh, well, let's let's give the underdog a chance here. Sure, hey, I'm into it. So, <laughs> DC is the underdog. Um, so <laughs> first and foremost, we have a few movie, a uh, couple of movie headlines, and okay. then second, we'll we'll talk about actual comics. Uh, so to get it out of the way, the Joker with our good pal Joaquin Phoenix mm -hmm. has an official script for the sequel. Yeah. Yeah. It's called Joker Folly Adu. Um, I don't really know if I pronounced that correctly, and I don't even apologize if I didn't. Nope. But supposedly that movie is um, is in the works right now. Hmm. The There's a script that got – I think the script was dated like May 18th or something like that. So – um, yeah, I saw a headline basically just saying that they someone had taken a picture of Joaquin reading the script. Yeah, and then, that was kind um, of the spoiler. I think the guy who wrote it like scanned the cover of the script and okay. like, put an image up of it. But cool. Anyway, cool stuff. Sure. Um, I liked the Joker a lot, even though I'm not a big fan of the Dark Knight, like Frank Miller's Dark Knight, as you know. Yep. Um, I liked the Joker movie. I thought it was quite good, and uh, I'm hopeful that. You know, this the sequel is is going to be just as good, if not better. Um, the this the he, the the subtitle, if you will, of of Folly I Do. I think that is some sort. Of, I they were saying it's like a reference to a concept of like people who rely on each other, but it's like a toxic relationship or something like that. 
I can't remember what it means, but sure. It, it there's some sort of other other person involved Oof. in you have to assume based on the title. So sure. a lot of folks think it's gonna be more to do with Harley. Um That's a safe bet. Yeah. But I think you could also why not tie the universe together? Why sure. not get Batman involved now? You know? Yeah. Why not wake up Rob Pattinson? I'm sure he wants to, you know, have Joker show up. Get in the his band back together. Yeah, sure. There it is. Um anyway, so that's great. Cool. Next, we're moving on to Black Adam. Yeah. The official trailer, the first official trailer, not just a teaser. Mm-hmm. Um I guess it's the first trailer. I think it is, it, yeah. It's come out today. It's about two minutes long. But we just watched it before here. Ash, what are your thoughts? Uh, I'll, without overhyping it, that's the first DC trailer in a long time where I was like full on like excited by the end of it. I was like, wow. Mm-hmm. Like almost blew me away. I was like, this looks really good. It looks good. Yeah. I don't know if I'd go so far as to say really good. Like I, For me, it just looks very much like a Michael Bay movie where it's like <laughs> there's a lot of explosions, a lot of special effects. Um, sure. And that's cool. Uh, you need that for a Black Adam movie because he's a character with powers. Uh, yep. If you don't know Black Adam, I think we may have talked about him before, but to refresh your recollection, he is essentially an anti-hero, so mm-hmm. he's not afraid to kill people or do things for what he thinks is right. Right. Um, he is the um, more or less in the comics. He kind of runs his own country. He's very similar to Doctor Doom mm-hmm. in that he has his own country. He does what he thinks is right by his people, and he will stop at nothing. Uh, or Magneto, I should say. He's kind of like Magneto as well. Yep. Um, he'll stop at nothing to do what he thinks is right for the people that he uh, oversees. Um, he rules with power, and he is oftentimes a member of I wouldn't I don't know if he's really a member of the Justice League, but he's definitely helped out those characters on many occasions if their interests align, but he's not afraid sure. to fight them either. Yep. So he's actually a really interesting character in that regard. He's he's uh he has a very similar power set to Shazam or uh Captain Marvel if you if you will. From, Billy Batson. Yeah, Billy Batson. Um he, his powers are granted to him through Slightly different means, but he still requires, he still has to say the word Shazam in the comics to, sure. to power up. Um, it's not as drastic of a physical change as what happens with, with Billy Batson. Like, Billy Batson's a kid, yeah. and he says Shazam, and he turns into this, you know, big Superman like right. guy. Whereas uh, Black Adam is, he just gets it's, a suit. Basically. It's just the rock going to the closet and grabbing something out of there yeah. and putting it on. Yeah, yeah it's a shirt. Basically. Yeah, it's a, it's a spandex suit. Yeah. Um, Anyway, the movie looks okay. I think it 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 has potential to mm. do very well. Yep. I like I said, there's a lot of explosions and stuff there, and and I think it's gonna be very much a kind of fun, uh, you know, last quarter of the year movie. I think it said October, right? I believe that's what the trailer like said. October yeah. twenty one yeah, yeah. or something like that. Yep. Um. So yeah, it looks fun. I'm I'm interested to check it out. I really like Black Adam. Like one of my favorite stories of Black Adam and and Mike, who mm-hmm. you know our friend Mike, his uh one of our favorite stories, you say, is during one of the crisis events. He like Psycho Pirate is a DC character has this like mask that looks like those old vintage like drama like film studio masks. Yeah, the, yeah. You know the sad one and the happy one. He has this mask called the Medusa mask. Um. And basically, he can alter how people feel if they if he looks at them with his mask. Cool. Uh, I'm probably really butchering him. But in any case, he tries to use this mask on Black Adam. And Black Adam just, like, looks at him and says, like, no more silly faces. And just takes his two fingers and pushes the mask through his head. Cool. And out the back. And it's just disgusting. He and does I- his best, like, uh, Watto from uh, episode one where he's... What are you, Jedi? You think I can? You can fool me with these yeah, mind sort tricks? Sort of, except yeah, yeah. way more violent. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Watto. <laughs> That's a deep cut. You're waving your hands in front of me. Yeah. Anyway, so um, we'll we'll see. Uh, my judgment's reserved, but I'm 
cautiously optimistic that it will be good. I've just been let down by a DC uh, movie or two in the past. It'll, it'll I'm see. Give it a chance. Yeah, yeah. It'll all depend once again on how much Warner Brothers feels like just putting their fingers in the pie. Well, and, uh, it's, it's you know. happening a lot with the Flash movie. It sounds oh. like, and that that I'm very concerned about the Flash movie at well, this point. And being that you know, the Flash is one of my favorite superheroes. Sure. Um, yep. It's it's one of those situations where I have very low expectations for the flash movie and I, all i hope to come out of it is that they set their cinematic universe right mm-hmm. i hope they appoint a kevin feige-esque person to oversee all the dc stuff uh sorry to say ash but if they come knocking i might have to go and work on the dc films so uh Understood. I, know, I know they're probably scouting talent here in winnipeg uh, specifically in a comic store mm-hmm. um but yep yeah anyway Moving on to some comic book news, okay, uh, and probably the biggest DC headline that I can think of out of this last week that's not Dark Crisis related because I'm kind of fatigued on that already. Sure, we another, a lot another it Batman week. title. Yes, Echo. Oh, okay. Sort of. I was being funny. Sort of. Yes, <laughs> uh, a Batman tie-in title. Okay, uh, Dark Knights of Steel is oh, getting yeah. a prequel comic. Oh, interesting. So, if you don't know what Dark Knights of Steel is. Dark Knights of Steel is essentially a... DC's version of Marvel 1602. No. <laughs> it's uh, it's more... Like, 1602 is not... It's like... That's like Pilgrim kind of y- stuff. Yeah. I, I more meant like, Mar- it's a, like... It's a story it's back in time. Yeah. yeah, it's an Elseworld story that yeah. happens on a different... It's not just back in time. It's in. It's a very different setting completely. Right. The world is medieval. Um, people think there's like magic and whatnot. Superman and Batman are brothers. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry if that's a spoiler. It's in the first issue though. Um, Superman's like parents come to Earth with him, so mm-hmm. it's a different. The whole situation is different. Um, anyway, it's a very cool story. I would recommend checking it out. I think Tom Taylor wrote that one. I believe you're right. Yeah. Uh, I believe the first series is 12 issues? Correct, 12. And they're on books seven six just, or seven. Seven yeah. is just okay. back there. Yeah, there so, um, yeah, if you look right beside Ashley's ear, it's uh, on the left side of your screen. It is, okay, now it's covering it. There yeah. it is. Oh. That black and kind of orangey book. No, other side. Yeah, there you go. That there one. That is Dark Knights of Steel issue seven. In any case, it's probably in stock at your LCS, so mm-hmm. uh, beyond issue one at the very least. Did issue yeah. one get a second print? Do you remember? Uh, I I want to say I think so, just because most of DC's main title stuff mm-hmm. has gotten a second print. So. Yeah. Either way, I would recommend yeah. checking it out. It's pretty cool. If you're into medieval stuff, like magic and kind of high fantasy stuff, maybe no elves and things of that nature, sure. but there's definitely a lot of magic and whatnot. I, it's cool I read, to see uh, the spin. On I read the, the first couple issues on yeah. your recommendation, and I enjoyed it. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, uh, It's neat. It's a cool uh, new story. I'm glad that they're taking that world and doing more with it mm-hmm. instead of just having like a 12-issue thing. That's um, Anyway, cool. Uh, that's pretty much all I had for news. I know you said you wanted to talk about something. Yeah. When so I rolled my eyes. But. Yeah. <laughs> Comic book news related and a little self-serving and um, what's the what's the word I'm looking for here? Um, so Marvel's version of the Fortnite story uh, premieres today. Issue number one of Marvel. Uh, what are they calling Zero it? Zero War. Zero War um, with Fortnite. Um the reason why I wanted to mention this was, uh, I don't. You and I talked at length about this, but when the DC version of this story came out uh, oh, yeah, you're last a big year, fan. I well, so initially I was not a fan. I thought it was a gimmick. Uh, they're just doing this for codes, blah blah blah. Fast forward to a couple months ago when you and I started playing the game again. Don't be telling people. That. <laughs> Jeez. And I ordered us the uh, the trades so that we could have the codes. Uh, to play in, you get in-game loot with the codes in the book. Marvel does the same thing. Um, I read through it, and I was like, actually upset with myself that I was so hard on that book because it was really good. And I, it's good. I, you, I, you enjoy it. I really enjoyed it. Um, anyways, so that's there's that. Um, yeah. So Zero War, Marvel, Fortnite comes out today. Um, written by the same guy who wrote the DC one, which is pretty cool, Christos Gage. Um, I read through issue he's been, one. He's been writing comics for oh, a he, minute. Oh, for a minute, yeah. Uh, I read through issue one, really enjoyed it. There is a, 
absolute banger of a cameo by one of your favorite characters right at the end of the book. And it's we'll uh, whew, spicy. Anyway, so pick it up if you'd like. If you've got kids who are into Fortnite, there's codes in this one again. You get a pretty cool Spider-Man skin yeah, in true. issue one. Um, yeah, yeah, that's you can, you can uh, redeem the code on your Epic Games launcher if yep. you're playing on PC. Yep. Get to uh, wear a new Spider-Man costume. Spider-Man kind of gets like a Iron Man style costume for this run. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that's the new the new thing. Yeah. Uh, it look it looks like it's fun. Personally, I like the B cover more of issue one. It's a little more muted. The uh, mustard uh, B cover is very good. Yeah. Is it called the mustard? Well, that's his la- the, the artist's last name. His first name is escaping me, but his last name is mustard. Donald. That sounds that's right. That's the guy who made Fortnite. That's oh, is like it? The lead guy. Oh, that's the lead cool. Guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so he did the variant cover. Very good. Very good. Um, go check out Marvel, Fortnite crossover zero war mm-hmm. you heard it first oh yeah and they got that uh, what's his face cover too the Sinkovic cover yeah Sinkovic Sinkovic. I'll get it right one day. Uh, well, I just don't want him to come onto the podcast and yell at us one day. I'd take it. He'll be like, hmm. Yep. Anyway, very good. Very good. So, we've got three more segments to talk about. Well, let's blast through them. First and foremost, we're going to introduce a new segment here. I call this I got segment, my hat on tight. Yeah. Buckle in. Yep. This segment is inspired by people who watch the podcast who aren't super familiar with comic books. Okay. Um, we're going to do this probably every week, uh, and uh, I kind of briefly mentioned it to you last night, but mm-hmm. this segment is to kind of help you get into comics if you're not into comics currently or you know you don't know where to start. We hear it all the time in the shop. People come in for the yeah. first time, hey, I'm really interested in comic books. I've seen some of the movies. I don't know where to get started. Where would you recommend so, this segment is called The Rundown, mm-hmm. and basically we're going to just tell you a, a book that you can more or less uh, probably find in your LCS, um, local comic shop, a book that is probably available in trade paperback, mm-hmm. or just something that Ashley and I really liked as a, a run of comics, or uh, you know a single issue if we want to. Um, so in any case, I'm going to take some real low-hanging fruit here today. And <laughs> as I mentioned, it's a DC-centric episode. So I'm recommending, probably for the second or third time since we recorded, the DC series called Identity Crisis. Uh, it was a event in the late 90s, early I want to say 90, 98, 99. Yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. Essentially, the, the premise is that... Um, there's a C-list character called Elongated Man. He's mm-hmm. kind of a member of the Justice League, sort of, or Justice Society. He's part of their whole their farm, team. Their farm team, yeah. Yeah, basically. He's playing for the Manitoba Moose. Correct. Yeah. And uh, he, but his whole thing is that he's a detective. And him and Batman and, and the Flash all kind of like work really well together. They're all, you know, detective kind of types. Mm-hmm. And the Elongated Man's wife, gives him like a riddle or a mystery every year for their anniversary or his birthday or something like that some mm-hmm. special occasion uh long story short his wife has died and he is trying to figure out what happens and he's just a mess of a man elongated man is and the rest of the superheroes are trying to help him figure out who killed his wife and how more importantly because yep. um, therein lies who killed her and uh it's a very interesting story it's uh, a sad story it's uh, got a lot of mature themes in it, so if you're a young reader, I would not recommend reading this one. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely have your parents read through it first and decide if you know you're it's appropriate for you to read. But it is a pretty a pretty cool story. It gets very, good. very dark at some points too. Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely not for the faint of heart. So um, if you're sensitive to you know violence, um, sexual violence, anything like that, don't read it because it will probably upset you. Mm-hmm. But it is a very good story, in my opinion, and um, an, an very important good. one yeah. to the landscape of DC Comics, especially at the time, considering it came out pretty much at the end of the 90s, if, if I'm getting that right. I think it's yep. end of the 90s. Peak, um, peak Jeff Johns. Yeah, it's yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Jeff Johns wrote it. Yeah. Jeez. That's crazy. Um, anyway, Ash, do you have a recommendation for people to check out if, if yeah, they want to get into comics or I something won't, to uh, I won't quite, again, very low-hanging fruit. It's episode one, so we'll keep it simple. Uh, or uh, segment, the first, the first, the first segment. rundown. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
Civil War is what I'm going to suggest. Mm. Um, probably the most accessible <clears throat> trade paperback of all time. Yeah, you could um, say. I, I think you would and, not be wrong. And I won't go into as much detail for the interest of time. Um, but, I mean, we've seen the movies. Um, it's not at all like the movies. No, but I'm saying you get the idea yeah, the, of what it's about. Yeah, the superheroes are going to fight each other. Yeah. Um, you know it's Tony Stark versus Captain America. Mm-hmm. The whole lead into this story is that um, there's a, a young team of superheroes who are kind of filming their own, like, reality tv show of them catching bad guys Mm -hmm. and they they managed to kind of corral a bad guy towards a school and in doing so this bad guy whose power is to explode himself he explodes himself inside of a school and kills everyone in it Mm -hmm. and it sets off the superhero registration act which is very similar to what you see in the movies the concept being you know superhero needs need to be held we need to know who they are yeah and then it becomes uh you know captain america is like no that's infringing on our rights and freedoms iron man is like uh yeah it should yeah and then you know they they fight so really cool story i really like the the consequences in that yes and as with most things the book is better than the movie 100 percent. the movie did not have nearly the amount of licensing it needed to in the comic you see like 50 to 100 heroes, yeah. different ones, fighting each other. The only downside, I will say, to the Civil War story is that there's mm-hmm. tons of tie-in comics. Oh, so God. Yeah. It, it, it probably started tie-in fatigue for me, where I was well, like, was... oh, my God, dude. And Frontline, if you yeah, ignore the Frontline story, in my opinion, yeah. it's just like a street-level reporter who you'd never seen or heard of before. Right. She's talking about, like, oh, this is happening this week, and blah, 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 blah. And it's... You, could, you could realistically read the one trade, which is Civil War covers yeah. issue i think it's one to six um sure. and get a pretty good gist of it uh as bobby kind of alluded to i i think the actual number is that there was 143 books that if you wanted to read every tie-in of civil war that is what it would entail uh which is exhausting yeah. um that's probably what 2007 uh, six 2006 yeah, 2007 that sounds about right yeah yep. yep. anyway that's my recommendation great well mm-hmm. Good stuff. So once yeah. again, just to summarize for our rundown this week, uh, check out Identity Crisis if you're into DC, mm-hmm. uh, or Civil you just want to read a cool story. Civil War, uh, same thing. If you're yep. into Marvel or you want to read a really neat storyline, uh, you could probably find either of those comics in trade paperback or graphic novel form. Mm-hmm. They're very easily accessible from most LCSs. We can order them as, as we I have mean. some coming next week. Yeah, so yeah. you know, uh, definitely orderable. So if you're uh, not from here locally and you, you're not able to come into our shop, um, talk Amazon to your local comic shop. Comic check shop, out, yeah. yeah, check out Amazon, whatever it's got to be. Those are some lovely stories. Yep. All right, moving on. Buying the dip, Ash. Mm. Our favorite segment. Our now, favorite. This week, we could maybe address the elephant in the room, the comic markets, and a little bit of a downturn we're we're hearing from people on the internet. Well, what do you think of that? I think the whole. What do you? How do you not buy the dip at this point? Because everything's in a dip. Uh, I don't know. I think, I think it should be taken with a grain of salt. In a sense mm-hmm. that uh, some people want there to be a dip so that they can buy more books or find their big books that they've been searching sure. For their the whole the lives. the yeah. innocent side of it, uh, and probably the majority is yeah the the collectors who are able to attain their grails. Um, yeah. You can get into them cheaper now. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But I I'm more of the I'm leaning more towards the camp of I think that there is a larger group of people. Uh, bigger retailers if you want to call them that who uh i think just want to get scoop up some books for cheap yeah i think that's stupid i think hat on tight yeah Yeah. i think you're dumb okay Uh, i think that basically the economy is kind of uh not in a good spot good save sorry save myself there um the economy is quite bad uh especially you know gas prices across the earth are you know yeah higher than ever there's less money for collectibles thereby people are going to spend less money on collectibles and things start to drop in price Mm -hmm. um somebody who i watch on youtube i told you yesterday was saying you know if you want to gauge the health of the market check out the price of amazing spider-man 300 if it's in a real low or or if it's if it's declining quickly you know that things are probably not great Mm -hmm. spider-man 300 is in a good spot still so 
I don't think that it's the end times. Everybody is, you know, if you if you go onto YouTube, all you see is negativity. All you see is people saying, yeah. oh, it's, it's over. The comic market is crashing, blah, 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 blah. It's not crashing. It's just that there is no. less money around because we're not – at the start of the pandemic, mm -hmm. where everyone is chilling at home, stuck at home, figuring out what to do with all their collectibles and and yep. all the extra money that they don't need to spend on yep. gas. So, you could you could argue too. Summertime has a mini dip. Yeah, all, year, year over year yeah, over year. That's that's just people people are going outside, going on vacation, mm -hmm. doing things. Ask the us market in, softens uh, a little bit. Yeah, ask us in December at sure. the end of the year there you how go. the market's doing, and we'll let yep. you know if the comic shop's still standing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> literally yeah, yeah quite literally yeah. Yeah. anyway so buying the dip i've mm -hmm. got a recommendation this week for a books okay. um i'm gonna just do a general theme because i don't have a specific issue in mind oh okay uh this character is kind of a big deal in dc once again mm -hmm. but um also a b-list character not a lot of people would know this one so okay. i'm gonna recommend anything that is based on the specter oh yeah Someone near and dear to my heart. Yeah, the Spectre yeah. is uh, basically he's like the ghost. Or he's like a – I wouldn't call him a ghost. but a Spectre, he's, if you will. Yeah, he's a Spectre. Yep. Uh, his job is to uphold law and order in the DC universe. Sure. And, you know, he's got a really he's, – he's more or less a force in the background for a lot of the stuff in mm -hmm. modern comics. And the older stuff, he's more front and center. But – um, in some of the more famous uh, recent stuff, he possessed Hal Jordan or r vice versa. Yeah, yeah. Hal Jordan dies in, what, Green Lantern 50 or something like that? That sounds right, yeah. And so Hal Jordan, who is the main Green Lantern for leading up to that point, more or less, mm -hmm. he becomes the Spectre, um, and he has this job of upholding law and order in the universe for a while. And it's, it's a neat uh, story, that one. I think that's probably early 2000s, but... Um, in any case, yeah, I would recommend checking out some stuff of the Spectre. Uh, you can find tons of resources online mm -hmm. of where you would, what specific issues you want to go after. Sure. As much as well, I like to avoid talking about this website. Uh, Key Collector is a good one if you want to find out what some of the key issues are for that character. You could, like, and it, he has something for everyone in a sense of people who like to collect cool covers. Yes. Some of the, like, Silver Age Spectre covers are... Whew, man, like amazing. We've had them come through here. Quite yeah, we've a few times. we've had a few come through. Um, with DC stuff, it's not as common as Marvel, but man, the Silver Age Spectre covers. Uh, Neil Adams did some. Mm -hmm. Man, who very very good. Yep. Yeah. Okay, man. Uh, what is your recommendation? My buying the dip is two books um, that have been quiet-ish. More so, um, I think they hit a high on. Everybody was jumping on the speculation train, and now it's just kind of quieted down. And I don't know why, because we know that they're going to come. It's it's too juicy not to. Uh, I'm referring to Silk and Spider Gwen. So uh, two two books that we've had come through the so shop literally in the last week. Right. So Amazing Spider-Man four and Edge of Spider Verse two. Um, I I yeah I don't see how these characters don't show up in something. Uh, it's uh, sticking to the theme of low-hanging fruit, it might be the lowest-hanging fruit of all time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that they are in a good spot, whereas everybody is, you know, uh, on the Miles Morales train because he's front and center. I think that Gwen and, um, and uh, Silk are being slept on. Yeah, so um, we've still got a bit of time here so i'll touch sure. on this point quickly if you are an investor in comics if you are paying close attention to the buying the dip segment here mm -hmm. one thing that i will note and it's not quite a counterpoint to what you're saying here ash but sure. uh, a trend we see not something we necessarily agree with here in the shop um there is kind of a, a loose rule in investing in comics uh you want to invest <laughs> primarily unfortunately in male characters who are most like 99 percent of the time Typically, they are yeah. they are white uh male characters yep. who are the 
I guess you would call them the A-list. There are some exceptions to the rule. Early Black Panther. Sure. Uh, First Miles Morales yep. are, are some books that are huge as well. Yeah. But for the most part, we're talking First Thor. By first and Captain large. America. Yeah. You know, all those Marvel characters, they will have the most value. Now, if you want to collect uh, female characters or, mm -hmm. or other, uh, if, you, if you have, uh, you know, what would be... Um, like Satana or yeah, like um, if you wanna, yeah, I'm trying to think. Is there Storm? Like a, is there a trans superhero that I'm th that I'm forgetting about right now? Uh, like no one, no one obviously that uh, has the value. That, well, like value as in a sense of the book has been around <coughs> yeah, for a long I mean. time. I don't. Yeah. Uh, there's no. There's the closest. The closest you could get would be maybe like North Star or um, sure. or um, that would be X Force. That sounds right. Yeah. yeah. In any case, sorry to, yeah. to butcher this. No, no, but, all good. Um, there are the what I'm trying to get at is the trend is that these A-list white male characters are the ones who carry the most value in the market. Traditionally, um, traditionally, yeah. yes. There are exceptions to every rule, of Always. course. If you start to go into female characters or characters of uh, other sexualities or other genders, what have mm -hmm. you, that you'll still have books that are expensive, but sure. they won't never not currently i should say they do not have the value that these other characters will and i i don't like that i don't agree with it at all no but. and i mean you could take a, a a very recent and proper correlation in a sense of look at when they released the trailer for thor you know we saw yeah. jane foster as thor that book that book took a zoom up well, but the, it was not nearly if, the zoom of yeah the what if where she wields the hammer the first time has the most value you sure yes yeah. i think yeah. like two grand in a in a nine eight i or believe so like yeah um but the rest of the book like it's kind of it's kind of a bad example not not to poo poo what you're saying but sure. it's just a, that that book was a 2014 i believe right um book and uh, is it 2014? Uh, but anyway, yeah. that book is is way, way, way abundant in the market. So sure. when the Jane Foster um, trailer hit, we saw that the market flood. And this is yeah. part of the reason why we're seeing such a dip in the market is because a lot of collectors, the beginning of the pandemic, bought a whole bunch of stuff on the spec train. Mm -hmm. Everyone got on the spec train, and the next thing you know, the market gets flooded every time that something comes out. Right. And sometimes this this market is ridiculous. Like sure. when Doctor Strange, remember when Sleepwalker was Sleepwalker, <laughs> Sleepwalker issue Walker, 1? Yes. Yeah, Sleepwalker yeah. issue 1. If you bought a whole pile of Sleepwalker issue 1s, let me know cuz I got a bridge to sell you. Yep. Yep. They're back in the dollar bins. Yeah. Yeah. Um anyway, so yeah. if you're investing in comics, keep what i said in mind you unfortunately will need to go mostly for those those a-list characters if you want to sure. make big big money really quickly if you want to grind a little bit there's nothing at all wrong with going after you know first mystique uh first you know raven sure. first you know there's there's nothing at all wrong with those characters I think, or, or the value of those books i think that silk and gwen might break the mold a little in a sense yeah. of them being in the Spider Verse. Yes, yes, that, that has true. that has a, a much higher potential. Uh, well, even for Jessica, uh, Jessica Drew, right? Sure, Spider, Spider Woman. Woman. Yeah, yeah absolutely. She's becoming, uh, that's becoming an exciting book to watch too in the market. Sure, Marvel Spotlight. Yeah, 30. but I but I think that that one would fall better into the heating up segment than. Yeah, the no, dip. I'm just saying that yeah. as far as breaking the rules. Oh yeah, of yeah, absolutely. Only by white male characters. Yeah. The Spider Woman, the Silks, the Gwen uh, Stacy as mm -hmm. uh, Spider Gwen. Those are all definitely unique cases, and um, hopefully, show us uh, what the market will turn towards in the future. Yeah. Also, another thing I should say before we move on, sorry, mm -hmm. is that uh, villains are another whole rule. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, villains do not matter. They, they will not hold the value that a not hero would have. If, yeah. for example, Thor, like Thor... Okay, that's a bad example. Uh, Red Skull and Captain America. Sure. The first Red Skull versus the first Captain America. Those are two different books, if yep. I'm not mistaken. Yep. First Cap, probably worth a lot more. <sighs> yeah, I, uh, way more. F I, I mean, that's that, that book's from the 40s. So, <laughs> um, What's a better example? Uh, shoot. Um, bah, bah. I'd say, uh, like, Spider-Man and Doctor Doom. Sure. Yeah. 
I mean, either way, right? It's like, yeah. Similar timeline. Similar timeline, um, similar, you know, significance to the sure. universe. Yep. Both books are expensive, but one's clearly a lot oh, more expensive. One, one is one is uh, a house. The other is an entire apartment complex. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it becomes one of those situations where you want to invest, ideally, into heroes, mm -hmm. but... If you can't afford to invest in the heroes, the villains are not a bad choice. It's just you have to strike while that iron is very hot. For example, Gore the God Butcher, even though, like I said, with Thor, kind of a, a bad example because of the market right now. Sure. Um, it is still a thing. The first appearance of Gore the God Butcher is a $200 comic currently, mm -hmm. more or less. And a couple years ago, before the Christian Bale announcement, that book was, was still 40 50 bucks. I was going to say 40 50 bucks. Yeah. yeah. So it... It's one of those things where it didn't go crazy, but yep. it went up still. Mm -hmm. And that will be the trend as well. The the So if you think about, like, you have, like, four quadrants, right? Yep. Your highest quadrant is uh, male superhero. Mm -hmm. um, your next quadrant is male, or sorry, female superhero. I guess you could say also, you know, whatever gender. Yep. Uh, anything other than male uh, sure. would be the next one over. Then you've got male villain mm -hmm. and anything other than male villain would be you know your, your unfortunate lowest right lowest value as but, far as what uh market history would dictate yeah yeah and it's a sensitive topic i'm of sorry course it to, is, yeah. to say like it it I tackling the tough comp co uh tough tough, tough yeah. topics here at uh, 204 comics. yeah it's yeah. it's a hard one to talk about because it sure. sucks and i think that like um there's a there's it might make people not feel included um, or that like they're not respected or something like that. And that's not the case. It's just, well, so this what, is... what way to, what better way to buck the trend than yeah. and start buying, up start buying issues. up female comics and yeah. 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 It's a weird, it's a weird dynamic. The market sure it is. Yeah. That. Okay. Anyway, um, moving on quickly here to our hot book segment. Yep. Ash, have you got a recommendation for a uh, hot book? Yes. I'm going to just, uh, it's, it's kind of what you were saying, more of a, uh, more of a topic or a, or a, uh, a whole segment. That's ah, not really a segment. It's one one particular book, Sandman. Sandman stuff mm. is absolutely on a tear right now. Yep. Yep. And that's, uh, yeah. Hundo P. Trailer released yesterday. Looks very good. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I'm excited for that one. Sandman has a special place in my heart. Uh, always enjoyed the stories. Neil Gaiman, amazing writer. Um, yeah. Pumped for it. Cool. I... For my hot book segment, I'm going to go with one that we've once again had here in the shop a couple of times. Mm -hmm. uh, a book that is a little difficult to find these days, mm -hmm. but I believe it's hot because an announcement came out a little while ago. I'm not sure if we t touched on it. Mm -hmm. Our good pal Charlie Cox is going to be more or less mm -hmm. in Daredevil yep. on Disney+. Plus. We assume in the near future they announced they're bringing the show back. Mm -hmm. So my... Hot book recommendation is Daredevil issue 131. Ooh. The first appearance in Bullseye. Origin of Bullseye. Yeah. Uh, Bullseye is pretty much his, you know, main villain. One of his main antagonists. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I think that that book, even though there was some interpretation of Bullseye in the first uh, season or two of that Daredevil show, mm -hmm. I think that that book is still slept on and they can still play around with the universe and bring that character back in some capacity. Absolutely, they could. So... I'd be interested to see that. That book's been heating up a little bit since the announcement. So um, cool. if you can find a Daredevil 131, by all means, go for it. Mm -hmm. Cool. We have a couple minutes here. So, Ash, we'll move on to the Awesome Arena for this the week. The Awesome Arena. The Awesome Arena, if you don't know, is essentially a fan vote. We will give you two characters. And we'll say, hey, who would win in a fight between mm. these two characters, to the death or otherwise? Your job as a viewer is to let us know who you think would win. You could leave a comment on fa on uh, Spotify. Yep. Sorry, not Spotify, on YouTube. You can, if you're listening on Spotify, you could shoot us an email, uh, info at 204comics.com. Or a Facebook message. Yeah, you could shoot us a Facebook message. Or if you're watching the podcast somehow on Facebook, or you found it on Facebook, leave us a comment on our, mm -hmm. on our page. Whatever you want to do. Let us know how you think this character will win so we don't have a stinky draw once again. <laughs> so, Ash, 
Yeah. It is your job this week mm -hmm. to say who you are pitting against each other in the awesome arena. And then I'll tell you what, at the end of like 10 episodes or something like that, um, we can do a, la a, a ladder. We're going to do a contest of champions. A best of. Yeah. Ooh, a contest of champions. Yeah. I like the so, comic time. I mean, it'll be a, a situation where the, the winners all fight each other. Sure. And we're going to find out who wins one way or another. Yep. Who's the Who's the greatest? But in any case, who are you pitting against each other? So my uh, at the risk of you ridiculing me, which is fine. Oh, I don't gosh. really, I don't really care. A um, couple of childhood favorites here. I'm going to go with Venom versus Spawn. What do you think of that? I think you're a '90s youngster. Yeah, well, I think that is every person who grew up. Like you might as well have said Ghost Rider versus Spawn. Like just unbelievable. They're all the same. Well, those three characters. Okay. They all suck. I'll let Uncle Al know that you don't think he's very cool. Let him know. Yeah. Give him a give him a ring. <laughs> um, okay, so Ghost Rider, sorry, Spawn versus Venom. Correct. Okay. Your thoughts? My thoughts, uh, I would say frankly I give that one to uh, Spawn because okay. Spawn's powers don't seem to have an upper limit. Sure. He's he, and he has died and come back to life like a bajillion times. Where Venom is a man. He just happens to have an alien symbiote that, you know, mm -hmm. you kill the man. The, what's the symbiote going to do? Fair. I'm but, sure Venom's probably died and come back a handful of oh, times, too. A bunch of times, yeah. Which Venom are we talking about? Eddie Brock? Eddie Brock, yeah. Not Dylan. Dylan! Dylan! Okay, so um, that's, a, that's a perplexing one. Um, Spawn has the cape. Mm-hmm. The cape can do crazy stuff if you don't know Spawn sure. at all. The cape yeah. can be – it can harden. You can protect him from all sorts of stuff. It mm -hmm. has. It's kind of like Doctor Strange's cape from the movies, but more powerful. It, it's more of a weapon than just – it can be a weapon. It could just be defense. Sure. It, can't, it doesn't just make him fly around. Right. Also, Spawn has the motorcycle. Yeah. The vehicles. He's got chains. Um, he really is Ghost Rider, isn't he's he? He's basically just Ghost Rider, oh, but – uh different skin sure literally and metaphorically understood uh venom is just a dude who uh is it's debatable okay well he's just some guy who has an alien symbiote that's attached to him and the alien symbiote bestows all of his powers very much like uh if spider-man was super strong uh, venom has a very clear weakness in that the weakness is sound sound yeah yeah and I think that's been kind of uh, like slightly retconned here or there, though. Mm -hmm. And also, you've got to consider what Venom are we talking about? Because Venom took essentially took out No. Sure. And so, if you know the God of the Symbiotes is now Venom, well, let's just say first appearance, first appearance Venom versus first appearance Spawn. Oh, that's juicy. Yeah. Okay. Wait, Venom like. Venom Venom or Black Suit? No. Like Spider-Man. Because that's no, Venom Ven symbiote. Well, but they're different. Eddie Brock as Venom, uh, first appearance. The symbiote accentuates the the host, right? Sure. So Eddie Brock Venom versus Al Simmons Spawn. There you have it, folks. The worst matchup I've ever heard. <laughs> and uh, it is your job to vote. So once again, if you never want to see Ashley pitch another awesome arena, don't let us know that because it'll hurt his feelings. But tell us Won't who hurt you my think feelings. would win. Uh, and or if you think Bobby's being too hard on me yeah, right now. You could, you could say also that let too. us know. Yeah, but I'll just delete the comment. So <laughs> um, thank you so much for tuning in, everybody. I really appreciate it. Uh, mm -hmm. Once again, if you uh, are fans of the show, leave us a like on uh, on YouTube if you're watching that. The whole, the whole podcast is on Spotify now as well. I figured yeah. out how to upload it all there. You can watch in video except for episode one. Uh, I could probably make that a video, but I'm kind of lazy. So um, we'll we'll figure that out. Yeah. Um, so you can listen on Spotify, which is good. If you don't have YouTube Premium, means you can download. You, you can download listen on Spotify. The car. You can listen on in your car. You, you, if your phone's locked, you can still listen to it as as audio, or you could watch the video right on your phone or sure. a tablet, whatever. Yep. You don't have to worry about pausing because you locked your device, basically. Um, yeah, what else do we have? Any closing thoughts, Ash? No. Um, I hope everybody's having a good day, and uh, that's all I got. Okay. Well, um, 
thanks so much for tuning in. If uh, once again, leave us a like if you can on on uh, YouTube. There, leave us a comment. Like, subscribe, ring the bell. Yeah, put the bell on if you want to be notified on our uh, when our next content is available on mm. you know, on YouTube. Uh, obviously, Spotify, you can't really do that. You can hit the follow button on Spotify, which will. Uh, let you know whenever there's a new episode of the podcast up, uploaded. Mm -hmm. But you want to check us out on YouTube especially because it's a little more interactive. It's a two-way conversation. And mm -hmm. uh, also, um, we put other stuff than just the podcast on the YouTube right. channel once in a while. So, anyway, let's uh, get out of here. It's 11. We got to open the shop. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you again next week. Same place, hopefully. <laughs> Take care. Toodaloo. Bye-bye. Thank you.